The next variances we're going to be looking at are our labour variances. Now again, there are two things we want to consider in relation to our labour variances. Remember in our standard cost card, when we were calculating the standard labour cost per unit, we considered two things. We looked at how many hours we expected to take to produce a single unit. And we looked at what is the standard or expected rate per labour hour. So at the end of the year then, we want to consider each of these two standards. Did it take us more or less hours than planned to produce our units? And did we pay more or less than planned per labour hour? So in our labour variances then, we will have our efficiency variance and our rate variance. Our efficiency variance is looking at our labour hours. So did it take more or less hours to produce our units than planned? And that will be our efficiency variance. Have our staff been more or less efficient than we expected? Then our second variance will be our rate variance, where we look at was the labour rate per hour. More or less than planned. Just like our material variances, we are going to see that, that there is a standard pro forma we follow to calculate each of our two labour variances. If you follow this pro forma every time, then you will be able to get the right answer for every single variance in the exam. So, what is our pro forma for our labour variances? Well, first we look at our standard hours at the standard rate. When we're looking at our standard hours, we look at the units we have produced throughout the course of the year. So our actual production during the year. And we calculate how many hours would we expect it to have taken to produce those units. So it will be our actual production multiplied by our standard hours per unit. And then we just value that at our standard labour rate per hour. Once we've done this first calculation, we will compare that to our actual hours at the standard rate. So how many hours have we actually worked producing these units? And again, we value that at the standard rate. When we compare these two things, we will get our efficiency variance. So what we are looking at here is comparing the expected number of hours to produce our units with the actual number of hours it has taken us to produce those units. Then for our second variance, we take our actual hours worked at the standard rate and we compare that to our actual hours at the actual rate. This will be our actual labour cost in total then for the year. When we compare these two things, we get our rate variance. 
Our second comparison then is looking at the number of hours which have actually been worked throughout the course of the period, how much we would expect to have paid for all those labour hours and how much we have actually paid for the labour hours. Okay, so now that we're clear on our pro forma, we know how we're going to calculate each of the two variances. Let's look at an example. So, we have here the two bits of information we need to calculate our labour variances. We're told what our standard labour costs are. So, our direct labour per unit is two hours at eight pounds per hour. This is what we have planned for at the start of the period. Then we have our actual results, so we're told how many units we have actually produced, how many hours it has taken us, and what our total labour cost was for the period. Now all we need to do is plug this information into our pro forma to calculate our variances. So, we'll bring up our pro forma again. And first we're going to calculate our labour efficiency variance. So our standard hours at the standard rate, remember we look at our actual production, so we have produced 1,300 units. Our standard hours per unit are 2 hours. And then we multiply that by our standard rate per hour. So our standard hours of actual production are 1,300 by 2, so 2,600 hours. Valuing that at our standard rate, so just multiplying by 8, we get £20,800. Moving on to our actual hours at the standard rate, well, how many hours have we actually worked throughout the course of the year? We're told in the question that was 2,850 hours. Valued at the standard rate of £8, when you calculate that through, you should get 22,800. Final step then to calculate what is our efficiency variance. We just subtract the bottom figure from the top figure. So our variance then will be equal to 20,800 minus 22,800. When we work that through, we get minus 2,000. Remember, if we get a negative figure in these calculations, then that means we had an adverse variance. So our labour efficiency variance is £2,000 adverse. And why is this? Well, remember our efficiency variance is looking at did it take us more or less hours to produce our units than expected? When we looked at our standard hours, we said if we have produced 1,300 units, we would expect that to take 2,600 hours in total. But how many hours has it actually taken? It's actually taken our staff 2,850 hours. So it has taken them longer than we planned, they have been less efficient than we expected therefore giving us an adverse variance. So that's our efficiency variance complete. Let's look quickly then at our rate variance. So we've calculated our actual hours at the standard rate. We need to compare this to our actual hours at the actual rate. Remember I said this will just be our actual total labour cost for the period. We're told in the question our total labour cost for the period was 21,500. Again, we just have top figure minus bottom figure to calculate the variance. 
So our rate variance will be 22,800 minus 21,500, giving us a positive figure of 1,300. If we get a positive figure in our calculations, then this means we've had a favourable variance. So our labour rate variance is 1,300 favourable. At the start of the year, when we were doing our standards, we planned on a labour rate of £8 per labour hour. Clearly, in this case, our rate per labour hour has been lower than planned, so lower than £8, giving us then a favourable rate variance. Our last little step we need to consider is then what is our total labour variance for the period. Our total labour variance is just going to be the sum of our efficiency variance and our rate variance. So if we calculate then our total labour variance, remember we will subtract adverse variances and add favourable variances. So our total labour variance, we had minus 2,000 for our efficiency variance and plus 1,300 for our rate variance, giving us an overall variance of minus £700 so it is adverse. And that is our labour variances then, complete. The final thing we need to consider then in relation to labour variances is why might we have them. So why do labour variances occur? Well, if we begin with our efficiency variance, so why might it take our labour staff more or less hours to produce the units than planned? The first thing, of course, that could cause an efficiency variance, like all of our variances, is incorrect budgeting. So if the labour hours per unit that we established as our standard at the start of the year was incorrect or unrealistic, then inevitably we're going to end up with an efficiency variance. Other things that may cause our efficiency variance will be the skill of our employees. So when we set our standard hours per unit at the start of the year, this will be based on a certain level of skill amongst our labour force. If during the course of the year we end up employing staff who are perhaps more skilled than we expected to have. Presumably, if they are more skilled, more highly qualified or experienced, then they will be able to produce the units in a lower amount of time than we had originally planned for. Likewise, if our labour force is less skilled or experienced than we'd planned for, it'll probably take them longer to produce the units. And finally, our efficiency variance can link back to our materials. If our labour force are dealing with a lower quality of material than we had originally planned for, this may slow down the production process, resulting in an adverse efficiency variance. Moving on then to our rate variance, a couple of things which may create a rate variance for the company. Well, some of these reasons are similar. So clearly the skill of our employees may create a rate variance. So we can see the efficiency in rate variance might be linked. If the employees we bring on board throughout the course of the year are more highly skilled than we had originally planned for, we will expect them to produce the units at a faster rate, resulting in a favourable efficiency variance. 
But if they are more highly skilled employees than we had planned for, they are probably going to charge a higher rate per hour, which will result in an adverse labour rate variance. Other things that may contribute is unplanned overtime. So if our labour force end up working many more hours of overtime than we had originally planned, this is going to bring up our average rate for the year because of course we're going to be paying them a premium for those, labor, for those overtime hours. And finally, of course, we may have unexpected inflation. So, if average wages increase more than we had planned for, this will result in an adverse labour rate variance. And that's our labour variances section complete.